that the 11th hour miracle God is on top of our matter. And we've been taught severally this month that without faith, you can't relate with God. What connects us to God is our faith. And we've, we've seen so many things on faith. Now, in this service today, we are looking at the devil's strategy to kill your faith. The devil's strategy, a theater, the devil's strategy to kill your faith. That's what we are looking at in this particular service. The strategy of the devil to kill your faith. I had the choir singing, we walk by faith and not by sight. I thought that's what you are singing today. Second service, okay. Uh, it, will, it will work with our message because in the second service we are looking at how to make use of your faith. Because you can have something and not know how to use it. So let's look at the devil's strategy to kill your faith. Now we all should understand that we have one enemy. And what's the name of the enemy? It's the devil. Whether there are witches, there are wizards, there are human beings that are attacking us, all of them are operating under the influence of the devil. I bear uh, remote satani, not in shishe. They cannot attack us if the devil does not influence them. Then I want us to see this scripture, Second Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. I want you to understand from Second Corinthians two eleven. Please put voice to the keyboard for me. From Second Corinthians two eleven, that the devil does not just operate like a fool. Listen, the devil operates with uh, strategy. In fact, there is nobody that knows God among humans like the devil because he had lived in heaven before and he op 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 occupied a very prominent position in heaven. Now, there is no one that knows man like the devil because he has been sent down to the earth over 2,000 years ago. He has dealt with, in fact, he dealt with the first man. So he, he operates using a lot of strategies. Second Corinthians chapter 2, that's where we are starting from, verse 11. I read from here. He said, least Satan should get an advantage of us. Least Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of what? Of his device. We are not ignorant of his device. In fact, some versions will say devices. We are not, okay, it's devices I say. We are not ignorant, ignorant of his device. You know, I, was, I took my time, I was studying, when I was studying and preparing for this message, I was just looking at the dictionary when we talk about the word devices. Now, to device is to carefully or strategically operate. It's not that the devil is not that I'm coming through your front door to attack you. You will not come through. No, no. He has style. He has style. So we are going to look at the style that the devil uses, you know, to try to kill our faith. That's what we'll study in the service this morning. Now, but before we begin to look at that, we are going to look at what well, let's answer this question. Why is the devil after our faith? I believe we should know that by now. We have studied it in the course of the month. Why is the devil after our faith? Why does he want to kill our faith? Why? Now, he knows these three things. Number one, he knows that without faith, you cannot please God. According to Hebrews 11.6. You know, we studied that one two Sundays ago. According to Hebrews 11.6, the devil knows that the Bible says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Oh, lay, wolong. Is there. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So the devil knows that. That's why he's after our faith. Number two, the devil knows that without faith, you cannot overcome the world according to 1 John 5 4. He knows that the only way you and I can live and walk in victory is when we walk the walk of faith. Look at it. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. What's that victory? Our faith. So without faith, there is no how we can become overcomers. We cannot overcome without faith. Can you see why the devil is after our faith? Because you must know the reason why he wants to kill your faith at all costs. 
look at the third reason why it's after our faith the devil knows number three that without faith you cannot live that's according to hebrews 10 38 without faith you cannot live you can't live you will die without faith faith lack of faith is the reason why a lot of people die i'm telling you the truth why a lot of people die on time is lack of faith lack of faith i remember when my mother-in-law died now look at it now the just shall live by faith but if anyone draws back my soul shall ask my soul has no pleasure in him praise the lord now look up look up the just shall live by faith so without faith the just cannot live when my mother-in-law died before she died i i gave uh we gave her access to medical care so when we got there and the doctor also told me her mama died i said what happened we left her last night now we went home to eat and by the time we came the doctor said we noticed in her that she did not have what we call the will to live now mama had been saying it long before that is if somebody say, if i say if somebody say he's going to die ahead of his senior eh, it means that i've seen on him you know she was no longer seeing anything enjoyable about life the devil knows that once he succeeds to kill your fate he will succeed to take your life that's why he's after our fate and this morning by the grace of god we are now going to look at the strategy of the devil now that's what i'm asking what are his strategies to kill your feet now and i will speak only on one in this service and that one we are going to look at it from different angles hallelujah and god will help us to conquer in jesus name now what is that one number one that's the one he will show us pictures to create fear in our hearts now he shows pictures in order to create fear in our hearts he shows us pictures in order to create fear in our hearts write it down he shows us pictures in order to create fears in our heart he shows us pictures in order to create fear that is his strategy now if you look at the scriptures very well you will see that the greatest tool of the devil in bringing anyone down is one thing it is called fear wherever the devil sees fear he succeeds in his operation that's why he wants to show you things that will create fear now look at what happened in the life of peter peter was walking upon the water now he was walking boldly when Jesus our Lord said to him, Peter, come join me, walk on sea. He came to join Jesus and he was walking gladly. He was walking gladly. All the other disciples were in the boat. They were looking at Peter walking. And I believe they will be making up their mind that ah, when Peter comes back from this journey of walking on water, we will ask him how he did it. But the Bible says as he saw the storm, the wind being pushed, uh, tossed around with, by, by uh, 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 the, uh, sorry, the water being tossed around by wind. When he saw, he became afraid. The moment he started to not fear in his heart, the Bible says he started sinking. Why? Because fear is like a master key to the devil. Fear is a master key to Satan. So that's why he wants to show us fear. I wrote here, fear is the greatest tool of the devil to stop man from a great walk with God for exploit. Take note of this. Fear is the greatest tool of the devil to stop man from a great walk with God for exploit. I come again. Fear is the greatest tool of the devil to stop man from a great work with God for exploit. Now, which means whatever God has promised you, wherever God has chosen to take you, that okay, my daughter, my son, I will take you far. We are going places. The devil has had it. You know what the devil wants to do? He knows that the only thing that can abort that mission is when you begin to nurse fear. He will now begin to show you pictures. 
I will show you as we go on. Hallelujah. Do you know that it was fear that made King Saul to misbehave? The Bible says Samuel sent the message. Don't worry, I'm coming. We are going to make a sacrifice before you go for this battle and God will give you victory. The Bible says, and as you were waiting for Samuel, Samuel had not come. Akilodi had seen with Samuel. We have not seen Samuel. Where is prophet Samuel? The Bible says he saw that the people were running away. As he was hearing that the enemies were chanting. They were making noise like as if we are coming into the camp of Israel. We are going to attack them. The enemies were making noise. The Bible says he went. He looked forward. He looked left. He just took the, sacri the animal, made the sacrifice. As he finished sacrificing, Samuel walked in. Samuel said, what have you done? Ah, he said, I saw that the people were scattering. And I heard that the enemies were coming. And I've waited for you this long. When I didn't see you, I had to slaughter. You know what Samuel said? Samuel said, for this that you have done, the kingdom has been taken away from you. This battle you are going, you won't return alive. Fear is the reason why we misbehave. And what is fear? Fear is when you are feeling that something negative will happen. It's fear. Whenever you are, you are feeling that something negative will happen to you. That's what they call fear. You are just feeling it. Then because of that feeling that something negative might happen, you begin to do things that you are not supposed to do. Now, because you are now thinking that ah, 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 uh, uh, you know, you know there are people like that. You know, that's why so many people do the wrong thing. If you ask so many young ladies today that are falling into the hands, I was watching one online, a young lady fell into the hands of a Yahoo boy. It was fear. So understand it clearly. Fear is the greatest tool of the devil to make you misbehave. To make your walk with God on a journey of destiny to fail. I pray in the name of Jesus you will not fail. It was fear, listen, that made Aaron to commit blunder. It was fear. Do you know that the people came to him and they said, Aaron, Aaron, we have not seen Moses. This man Moses, we have not seen him. Now that we have not seen Moses. Now Moses went to the mountain to be with the Lord. And it was a 40 days thing. Though God didn't tell him he would come for 40 days. Moses didn't tell them I will be, long, I will be going for 40 days. But they have not seen him. And while they were thinking, we have not seen Moses. We have not seen Moses. What do we do? They came to Aaron. Out of fear. I don't know what to tell these people. I don't know what to do next. So the people said, you know what? Since we didn't see Moses, let us make a God that will lead us back to Egypt. And Aaron said, okay, don't worry, don't worry. You know what we're going to do? Okay, get your jewelries, give me your earrings, give me your nose. F Listen, most times, eh, anything you do in fear is always wrong. And I'm showing you how the devil makes you afraid. He shows you pictures. He put pictures in your mind. Now, let's look at more examples. More examples. Look at the jailer in the book of Acts of Apostles. When he woke up and he saw that, ah, all the prison doors were open. The Bible says he took knife and he wanted to kill himself. That's an accident. thing. Then Saul, uh, Paul, quickly stood up and said, we are here, we have not escaped. The man will have killed himself. And while he will, be, he will have been dying, he will have noticed that the prisoners were alive. And they were still in, in the prison. Fear is a tool of the devil. Whoever is telling you you will die now is only trying to create fear in your heart. Tell your neighbor, I will not die now. Say it like you believe it. Say it with great understanding. Shout it aloud now. Ah. One more example. It was out of fear that the sailors wasted the cargo they were carrying in the days of Jonah. Do you remember that story in the book of Jonah? The Bible says there was a, a, a terrible storm. Said, yeah, we are going to sink. We are going to sink. We are going to sink. In fact, I am so sure the owner of that ship 
ran, must have entered into great debt. Because by the time they will land at taxes, people will not find their goods. Say, so you will have had to pay all of them. That will have been his last business. Now, the first thing he told them, begin to throw everything into the sea. Throw everything into the sea. Let's lighten the ship. They threw everything. The ship didn't light. It was not lighting. The storm didn't cease. What do we do? Everybody call your God. The storm didn't cease. It was in the process that somebody said, let us consult the Urim and Turim now. They now consulted the Urim and Turim. The Urim and Turim now said to them, there is a man in this sheep. He has offended his God. He's running away. Ask him. They now ask him. The man now said, if you throw me into the sea, all this trouble will stop. You know what will have, they have been thinking? Why did we not consult God first? Fear won't allow you to consult God. Some people, they feel, feel sick. Hear me, in the night. Ha, how will you shame for me? I want to talk to the batting for you. Only the blood prayer. They feel sick. They will just go and begin to look for every drug in the house. And by the time, they, maybe, they say, maybe it's blood prayer. They take it. Ah, it's like stomach ache. What the they just say? They look for any drug. They take. Some people kill themselves before they break. Out of fear. So fear is the greatest tool of the devil. You must not allow it. That's why I pray for somebody listening to me. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of fear in your heart, I cast it out of your life now. In the name of Jesus. So how does he introduce fear? Just like I show you that he brings pictures. How does he introduce fear? How does the devil reveal these pictures? Listen. How does he introduce fear? He will magnify Listen, he will magnify in your sense world, in bracket, right, mindset. What you call a problem. I come again. He will magnify in your sense world, in bracket, mindset. What you call a problem. Lati I don't know whether this has happened to you before. That you, you think that something is big. You now took that issue before somebody. And you are now narrating. The person is now handling the case as if it's light. And you are now getting offended. I don't know whether it has happened to you like that before. It's a sign to show you that we all don't see things the same way. Are you getting what I'm saying? We all don't see things the same way. I remember, was it... Um, it was, uh, yeah, okay. The man is uh, he's gone to be with the Lord now. A great man of God. He went to see Bishop Oedeko and told Bishop Oedeko about a big problem in his ministry. They said, Bishop, laugh, 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 laugh. He laughed, laughed, laugh. Ah. The man said he was angry. Esa, Oroton Duemi, Leferi. He said, Bishop Oedeko said, let's go and eat. Eh, let's go and eat. Let them give us food. Ah, sir, you don't understand, sir. Or I told, told, told me like if he ran in. He said, by the time they now got to the table to eat, he said he wasn't eating. Bishop was, he was just like, eat, my friend. He said, it was at the process of eating. Bishop now said, it's a simple thing. Go and do like this, go and do like this. See, the first thing the devil does to create fear is to make what you call a problem to be big in your eyes. Now, he will show you the advantages of the enemy. He will show you the disadvantages you have. 
They might show you your age. Kill up below doing now. Oh, 40, oh, four, God, come on. She be tear bear man one in 40, low eye. You watch it, 150, oh, fee, God, can I don't use forget that statement from a professional doing. That you now begin to magnify. It's a strategy. When the devil begins to show you things like this, see, he wants you to begin to run some race that will destroy you. In the course of the week, they caught a man of God. He went to do charm for church growth. Now, when they ask him why, he said, because I've been in ministry for so long, the church did not grow. It's because the devil magnified his problem in his sight. Can I tell you this truth? No problem is big. That's why Jesus, our Lord, did not say we should look for mountain top faith. What did he say? He said, if you have faith as what? Small as mustard seed. Have you seen mustard seed before? How many of you have seen mustard seed before? Let me see your right hand. There are not plenty. The reason why and we are worried most times is because most of us have not seen mustard seed. Rice eh, is bigger than mustard seed. Rice. Rice to two. Olo manke keri. Oto to biju. Mustard seed. So, in the course of the week, I'll just study. So, Jesus is not looking for big faith. It means there's no big problem. What Jesus is looking for is small faith. I want to show you something. Let's look at this. Look at this. I brought three examples. Look at the first case. The case of the city of Jericho. Joshua chapter 6 from verse 1. Please look at the scripture. We are, we are going to learn something this morning. Now, Jericho was what? Securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Wait for me. Don't show me verse 2 yet. Hold on. Now look up. Let me tell you the geological uh, history of Jericho. Look up. Jericho was a city surrounded with mountains. So they didn't need to build fence. Mountain was their fence. So they link the mountains together. You can't climb it. And it had only one entrance. No exit. One in, one out. God now told the, uh, the children of Israel, I will give you Jericho. Go and spy. They went to spy and they came back. The people of Jericho now had that Israel wants to fight them. They now secured Jericho. Look at it. Scripture says securely shut up. Which means it was tight. Security was tight. And tight against only who? Israel. No other people. Do everything possible to make sure that no Israelite come in. But look at what God said in verse 2. Look at verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, finish it. Wait. Did God say, I will? What does I have mean? You see, I love that statement. Finished work. If God is saying, I will give you money, it's something that he has not done. It's a promise. If God said, I have given you, it's not a promise. It is done already. Now, in the natural sense, how do you want to believe that God has given you 
something that you yourself are looking at that is tightly and securely shut up. You know why verse 1 came? God, uh, sorry, the devil wanted the Israelites to by themselves destroy what God has given them. Do you know that every single time you allow doubt, every single time you allow fear, you are bought what God is doing in your life? That's why even Jesus could not stop Peter from sinking. He was to Jesus. Ni Peter was saying, shaking it. No, finally. Jesus now looked at someone and he looked at me. Which means that even in the presence of God, a child of God can suffer defeat. You don't understand me. What connects us to God is our faith. As long as our faith is no longer there, what will happen? God can't do anything. He may just be watching for the enemy to be prevailing. So that verse 1 was a strategy. Hello? That verse 1 was a strategy of the devil. Hear me. To make the believers, the Israelites, to doubt God and stop the process. But look at verse 2. Now, in verse 3, something up. Show me verse 3. Fast, fast, fast. I don't have all the time. Verse 3. And the Lord said to Joshua, If it's your polo, or my Lord, my me say, See, where am I? Okay, you shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Next verse. Be fast, be fast. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpet. Verse 5. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with great shout, then the wall of the city will fall flat and the people shall go up, every man straight before him, wait, remove that scripture now look up now number one, the side, I've shown you the strategy of the enemy, to create fear nobody be, ah, he be not take by ye, he be not take by ye, ah, how long will you be what he ain't in your shaman, Sabaman would be, ah in verse 2 God said Joshua I have given you know Israel didn't know all these things it was between God and Joshua I have given you in verse 3 we have so many Christians missing is that we don't used to wait for instruction Olua Oh God, look at the issue of my academics. I have finished school. You told me to go and study this. I'm out. There is no job. You told me you have made my path straight. Lord, what do I do? I, I, are you friends with me? Because, like I told you last week, for every situation, there is a peculiar instruction needed. Lord, what do I do to solve this problem? Now look at what God told them. God said, you don't need to bother yourself about the walls or whatever. Just march around. Once a day, and on the seventh day, march several times. And let the priest blow the trumpet of, Ram, of, of Ram's horn. And when they finish bringing it, you will see that all these things will sink. Can I tell you this truth? Whatsoever picture the devil is showing you about your health, about your family, about your life, about your business, is to create fear in you. Now, and when the devil shows you these things, what should you do as a person? You should go back to God. For one thing, and what is that? 
instruction. Lord, what will I need to do in order to gain victory over this present issue standing in front of me? Because as big as Jericho looked that time, eh, as, 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 as at that time, you will think you will need bulldozers. But they didn't know that the instruction that will bring Jericho down was just for them to march around. Seventh day, seven times. And when you are finished marching, let the priest blow the trumps. Do you know that on the seventh day as they march around, the priest blow the trumpet. Ah! The walls that those people trusted upon, the security that they thought was tight, everything just came down. And Israel walked in and ransacked the entire city. Stop allowing the devil to use pictures to kill your faith again. Please stop it. Stop it. That has been his strategy from day one. Before he could get Adam and Eve, he first made the woman to desire the tree. Arabini, who they will give and that die. What do you say about this tree? That's why I pray for somebody listening to me in the name of Jesus. Every wrong picture that have occupied your mind, making you to live in fear and doubt, I command them to be uprooted now and destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. Let's look at one more example before I give you a solution. The second example we are going to see, 1 Samuel chapter 17. We'll read verse 3 to 11. We'll read verse 22 to 24. 1 Samuel 17 from verse 3. Now look at this. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the champ of the Philistines, at the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath, from Gad, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. We won't start any more, you know, you know the meaning of Buga now. It's a popular song in Nigeria. Ah, you know now. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Yes. Now, the staff of his spear was like a waver's beam and his iron spear weighed 600 shekels ori just the head and his shield bearer went before him answer me now now the staff of his spear then he stood and cried out to the army of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servant of Saul, choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we'll be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servant and serve us. Yes? And the Philistine said, I defy the army of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Just give me one man. Move on, move on, move on, move on. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the man, they were dismayed and greatly what? Can you see that devil has, has 
use his booger to achieve his purpose. When Saul and all Israel heard his voice, now jump to verse 22 to 24. Now look at from verse 22. The devil cannot operate successfully without fear. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Move on. Then, as they talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. I have five minutes, guy. So, uh, so David heard him. Now look at what now happened in verse 24. When he spoke the same words, and all the men of Israel, when they saw, what did they do? They fled and were dreadfully afraid. Can you see? When they saw, they fled. That's what the devil wants to achieve. He wants to make you see and flee. That's why he's showing you your age. That's why he's showing you that medical report. That's why he's trying to raise people to criticize you. He wants to create fear in your heart. Will I ever be able to do this in my life? At this my age, I was asking one of our women. He says, sir, sir, my marriage is about to be one year. I said, they want to have... People are looking at me. I said, what are they looking at? That there's no child in our home. I said, do you owe them children? So they want to love for one. She was shocked. She was shocked. Fear is the tool of the devil. You know why nobody could challenge to come out to face Goliath? They were looking at all the things that was on him. And the more you continue to look at all the things on your Goliath, you'll be afraid. And when you, are, you, you, are, you become afraid, you're not able to walk in faith. And when you don't walk in faith, you don't enjoy victory. There is nothing God can do in your life when there is no faith. You can't even hear an instruction again when God is not, there's no faith. Because faith is your connection with God. How will God speak to a faithless person? And for every situation, can I tell you this truth? There is a how. Who sin cannot tell me how. Anytime I'm strong like this, I always ask God, is my assignment finished? You have not even started. You have not even started. Lord, what next do I do? You say, do like this. Thank you, sir. I move on. Now, tell your neighbor, three around you, I rebuke the spirit of fear from your life. Three, three. I refuse to die now. When I was talking to one of our, our, our mommies that uh, died of recent, we were, I was trying to pump faith in her, but I see that she didn't want to live again. She was always saying, What now? I'm thinking about she could not demand that you want. Uh, uh, and he said, go back to the king to the king of the king of the Don't ever get to a point in your life where you'll be willing to die. Are you hearing me? Don't ever get to that point in your life where you'll be thinking that is what is next. In case you forget, if you die, you won't eat your my again. You won't eat any good thing again. You are gone. So let's quickly answer this question because I have three minutes. What should you do when the devil shows you fearful pictures? What should you do when the devil shows you fearful pictures? What should you do when the devil shows you fearful pictures answer hear me open your heart to get a revealed 
or written word from God. Do what? Open your heart to get a revealed or spoken word, uh, sorry, or written word from God. Now, when I say revealed word, I will explain. When I say spoken word, I mean written word, I will explain. Open your heart to get a revealed or written word from God. Now, what does that mean? No matter the picture God shows you, go back to God's presence. Uh, I mean, no matter the picture the devil shows you, go back to God's presence. Be calm. And let God give you an instruction. Now, listen to this testimony. It was my mother and the Lord that shared it. She said when she was about giving birth to their firstborn, she got married at a very advanced age. So she got pregnant, you know, advanced age. And medically, they used to say, if you are pregnant and you are above 35, you are the risk stage. She was above when she got pregnant. She said, so she was afraid. What do I do? Something was telling her she will die. She was seeing pictures of death. You know what she did? She said where she was at home, she was praying. She was praying. And God just put one scripture in her heart. What's that scripture? And the 72 returned with joy. I want 72. Jesus will run off I will not fear your father. She said that word rang in her heart. She called her husband. Honey, let us pray. She prayed. Um, she packed her things. I'm going to the labor room. She said she went to the labor room with that scripture. And the 72 returned with joy. I will return with joy. Now, if I'm going to return with joy, I must return alive and with my baby. She said, and she returned alive with her baby. When the devil shows you the picture of fear, show him what the word of God says. If he's showing you death, show him the Bible says I will not die. If he's showing you barrenness, show him fruitfulness. The Bible says, and the Lord blessed them and they became fruitful. We become fruitful by the blessing, not by our age. If the devil is showing you a picture of poverty, show him that the Bible says he became poor, that I will become rich. If the devil is showing you the picture of sickness, show him that the Bible says even let the weak say, I am strong. Don't let him kill your faith anymore. Because when he kills your faith, you are gone. If the devil shows you a dream that is negative, show him the Bible says, For whatsoever I bind it on earth shall be bound in heaven. I have the rights to bind it, and the heavens will approve it. Say, here, God of us in it. I'm summarizing. Some months ago, one of us in church, I got a terrible dream about him. And after service, I called him to my... I said, I saw they gave you a sack letter in your office. And you called me, you said, sir, they have given me a sack letter. Ah! I said, and I woke up. I said, now, Nidam. I joined hands with him and his wife. I said, Lord, I cancel it. You will not be given sack letter. We prayed about it. Right here where I sat. And you know what happened? That last week, he called me, he said, sir, he too wanted to kill me with his news. He said, hello, sir. I said, what is it? He said, what is it for me? He said, you know what I remember? The dream I got. I said, rule letter, only promotion is a promotion is a but it will drop from me up by anybody. We attacked it. Who told you that every of your negative dream must come to pass? There are some questions I will ask when we get to heaven. That woman with the issue of blood, she bled for 12 years. Why did she not die? You don't know that the pints of blood in our human body is not plenty. And she was bleeding every day. How many times have you been bleeding? 
that you're already thinking you're packing your load you're writing your will you have accepted demonic picture the Bible says she sent, spent all she had with doctors she didn't get healing it means that doctors can they will only try it's not that healing is with them they are only trying is your faith coming alive now you must never you must never lose your faith too. the devil knows that that's the only thing if you lose that will make him to get you so when he shows you pictures there's no time second service if ever we started the message late and it shows you pictures he wants to create fear rise up in your heart i refuse to be afraid say i refuse to be afraid be on your feet be on your feet be on your feet sagada basada Dodo Jesu Shagada Badi Rosendele Miko Je Lei Lei Mudule Father, we thank you for your word delivered. As we prepare for the second service, we ask for fresh unction in the name of Jesus. Everyone that attended the first service that will not be in the second, I release them to go prosper this week again in Jesus' name. Let no weapon formed or fashioned against them prosper in Jesus' name. Watch over their going out and coming in. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God.